Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Tim Stead. Today I'm going to be going over how to get animated textures working properly in the Blender Game Engine. Now on the left here we have the default sort of animated texture using the game property here in the UV image editor. And then on the right here we have a custom sort of version that I've made which goes ahead and cycles through each frame using a Python script. So we're going to be learning how to do this one here and I'll just quickly show you why this one over here is a bad idea. So if I quickly move this one to layer 3 uh, then we can just focus on this one and so now if I press P you'll notice it's continuously playing the same animation however when I escape out this frame here is different. The starting frame keeps changing and you have no control on which frame it starts. So when you want to spawn in an explosion or something then the starting frame could be random and could be at the very end of the animation. So you might be starting when there's only some smoke left and then it'll suddenly loop all the way back and then you'll suddenly have a starting explosion and it doesn't work very well especially when it's out of sync. So that is one problem with it. The second problem is if we go over to the animated texture here is that if I turn off tiles you'll notice the way it's set up is sort of backwards and uh, across. So the first frame is here it goes one two three four five and then continues up like this and what's really strange is most textures will go along like this uh, but Blender decides it's a great idea to read it upside down for some reason so anyway that's a real hassle to get working if you want to make your own animated textures because the frames just don't rearrange like that very easily unless you do it by hand so on this new version here if I press P you'll notice it always starts on the same frame it doesn't randomly start halfway through or something. And the good thing about it is you can set up the textures like this or you can go ahead and set them up like this. So the way that the custom texture sort of works is that over here we have all the different frames of animation on different planes and then the Python script on here goes and spawns them in accordingly. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go File New open up a new blend file. Alright now in our new blend file let's go up the top here Blender Game Engine GeoSL animation frame rate of 60 then press X delete the cube shift A and add ourselves a plane so this plane here is going to be my animated texture so I'm just going to call it uh, animated texture and then over here we'll give it a new material make it shadeless uh, and then we can choose transparent no alpha go over here image or movie and choose alpha down here so I'm going to go ahead and open up my animated texture. Alright, so I have my one opened up here. Now if you haven't got your own, I have made a tutorial on how to make your own animated textures. So a link down to that in the description below if you want to go ahead and check it out. Otherwise I'll also leave a link to this one if you'd like to use that instead. So anyway, new window here. And just to make it easier, let's go over to Game Logic And make a new window over here. Move this across and this here is going to be our UV image editor alright and so now what we'll do is go into texture view and press tab U and unwrap alright cool and so now what we want to do is press tab go in edit mode and select our texture and we want to scale this to only fit to one frame so what we can do is use the magnet tool here SX and just scale it in you can hold down shift for smaller increments and then once you're happy just move it across now moving it along doesn't work very well even if you hold down shift so you might need to turn this off alright so get a suitable frame width and this is going to be the starting frame of our animated texture so on it let's go ahead and add an always over here add a python join the two together and here let's go ahead and give ourselves a script so this here is going to be called uh, let's just call it animate text.py and then import bge and actually scroll in a bit just so you guys can see it uh, import bge and then cont is equal to bge.logic.getCurrentController oh. own is equal to cont.owner and then what we want to do is we want a property on here to help us cycle through. So this here is going to be called timer. Well actually let's call it frame. And then move this across, uh, integer, and we'll turn it on. Also scroll down here in the render settings and choose debug properties. 
down here, animate text, and this here on a true pulse of one. All right, so what we're going to type in here is if own frame is less than and the number of frames you have. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So in here, when own frame is less than six. And if that's the case, then we'll do a colon next line. And in here, what we want to do is replace the mesh. So to do that, we're going to type in own dot replace mesh. Now the name of the mesh we don't have yet, so let's go ahead and do a quotation mark, and then frame, and then closing quotation mark, and then a plus, and then str for string conversion, and a round bracket, and in here we want to get this property plus one. So own frame plus one. Alright, so I'm just going to join these two together and move it across. And so now the second part is whether we want it to update the visual, so we do. So that's a 1, and then a comma, and a 0, because we don't want to update physics. Now what we want to do is go to the end, else, and then a colon, next line. And otherwise what we want to do, if it is equal to 6 or greater, we can either end the object so it just disappears after it's played the animation, but otherwise what you can do is you can just reset frame, so it just keeps looping. So enter own frame is equal to zero. All right, and then at the end of it, underneath, we want to add timer plus one. So not timer, frame. So own frame plus what is equal to one. Now the only thing we need is our individual frames to add on. So let's go over here, press shift D to duplicate GX move it across and this here is going to be our first frame so let's go ahead and call it frame 1 as you notice it's on 0 at the moment so the first frame will be 0 plus 1 and that will be the name so frame 1 like so and this here won't have any logic on it or properties this is just the mesh that we want to replace it with then what we want to do is press shift D to duplicate and GX move it across again now over here, UV image editor and press tab. And so now what we want to do is move it across to the next one. So try and get it as close as you can. All right, and then shift D to duplicate, next one, tab and move it along. Duplicate, next one, move it along. All right, and just do that for all of them. for the last one here. Alright, so move that one in a bit. So now we have frame 1, this one needs to be frame 2, this one here needs to be frame 3, uh, frame 4, frame 5, oh, and the last frame here. Alright, so we have all our different frames here. Now what we need to do is, this here is the object name. What we want to do is we want to change the mesh name, this here. So the easiest way to do that is double click this, select it, control C to copy, then double click this, control V to paste, and then click out. So now we've named them the same thing. Alright, now do it over here, double click, control C, then select the plus, double click, control V. All right, and we just basically copy and paste this name down into the mesh. So do that for this as well. And this one over here. And this one over here. Cool, so now we have all our different frames. And so now what we can do is select all of them and move them along to layer two. Cool, so now we have this here, and if we've set up everything correctly, that should work. So let's go over to text editor, just in case. Move it along, and press P. And there we go. We have our animation constantly playing. So just in case you did want to end it immediately, what you can put in here, and else, is just put own.end object. For example here, it'll play once and disappear. So what I can do is press M and move this to layer two as well. Over here, add myself an empty, and on it I want to add a keyboard. Let's just make it space on tap. And then I can add in my explosion plane. So animated texture, 
and however long we want it. So six frames, I think roughly, let's make it seven. So now if we press P and space, we can constantly spawn them in. And you can spawn in multiple copies as well. So anyway, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, or share down below. All of that stuff would be greatly appreciated. If you have any other problems or questions or requests or something, then feel free to leave a comment down below. If your one didn't work out, there will also be a finished op blend down below as well. But apart from that, hope you enjoyed the video. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.